Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Heal Our Land, Jubilee Church here in California, and we are day seven. Crazy. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, well, I, get, <laughs> yeah, I start getting so confused, tired. more puffy, more, you know, all that. But this has just been like an amazing, amazing, humbling time. It has been so rich. And I have just loved hearing from everybody. This afternoon during our prayer time, I was just sitting there fighting back, really just crying because I had some mascara on it and I didn't want it to drip. And so I was like, oh gosh, I mean, it was just, it was so tender and through, it's like you're recognizing we serve a living God, that we can be discussing things with people in all of these nations, and we all sound the same, even though we're different nationalities, we're totally different in yeah. ways that we live, but we all have a Heavenly Father yes. who communicates to us so similarly, and it's like we're all family. Yeah, and you know, so we were in Asia today, before that we were uh, in South America, North America, it's, but it's like, it's like the manifold wisdom of God. You start seeing all of the variations of his body and in, it's been impacting because, oh, those couple of round tables we've had that it just took us the, in today's in group with the young people from Indonesia and, yeah. and just pursued yeah. it. It's like the faith of, of the body starts in accelerating the faith in each other. It's like you feel the faith rising and then the humility. Yeah, exactly. So thank you, thank you so much, everybody. I just believe that God is going to honor you as you have been honoring him. Yeah, so this is day seven. So we're in Africa and t touching up on the Middle East a bit. And we've got an, uh, we'll do that tomorrow morning at nine o'clock with the round table with leaders from Africa and uh, someone of Pakistan. And then we'll go into intercession. And then tomorrow night will be day eight. It'll be the close, closing of this conference. And we will believe God's got a blessing, a completion, a place of, of, of in, intentional exchange as we go back into Israel and the Middle East. I want to thank everybody too for just going with us. There's 22 sessions we've done. And I, I you know, in uh, Solomon's dedication of the temple and during the Feast of Tabernacles, he, he offered 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep during this eight days. And I've thought it's labor intensive this is. We had people in Indonesia at prayer they joined us to pray with us at 1 p.m., which meant they were up at 3 a.m. Yeah, exactly. And they, they, I've been humbled by the dedication, the consecration, the readiness to just jump in and, and say, sure, this is what the Lord's asking of me. Then it's lifted my, my desire to just lay down my life for Jesus even more. So I believe we're going to feel that same thing as we br visit with our brethren in Africa. There's the... And we're just so happy to have Randy and Edie yeah. here with us. They're a blessing to our body. And many of you are familiar with them, but you're just really in for a special treat tonight. Yeah, because they began their service in Africa, in, in Kenya, and they grew, raised their children. They, they just, they're, they're heroes to me in the way they just stepped into a world and found a way to... To, yeah, to keep loving Jesus and loving each other while they did incredible work. So let's uh, take a moment and pray. And we want to then get into worship. And then we're going to step into the, the whole evening that God has for us. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this Sukkot, this Feast of Tabernacles that you gave us, that we, allows us to live in a place of, of knowing we have someone greater than ourselves to take us into our future. And we thank you that we can come to you in sincerity and humility when we've messed it up. And when we took it back and tried to do it ourselves, and we finally realized what I'm doing isn't working. That you invite us, in fact, during this feast to cancel debts. And you invite us to come and humble ourselves and to pray, be honest, 
to seek your face and turn from the wicked ways you reveal that we are captured back in. And then you are so gracious to hear from heaven to forgive our sin and heal our land. We believe this tonight especially. And we bless all of the contributions that are coming from Africa and from Middle East, the messages, the worship, the prayer. And we bless the worship we're stepping into right now from our, our young adults here, here in Jubilee. Just release the sound of worship. Let us worship together. We honor you, Jesus. You're yeah. so worth it all. Yeah. Oh, thank you for what you've already done. And thank you for what you're yet to do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, for the incredible being that you are, and for your choice to be intimate with me, to know me, to pay attention to me. We just want to worship you with our thoughts and our hearts, with our posture, the way we stand, the way we sit, the attention that we give to you, Lord. We want to worship you with our lives. Open up my heart to the Holy One. And I open up my heart to the Holy One. Yes, I open up my heart. 
to the Holy One. I open up my heart to the Holy One. You are so holy, so holy. You are so holy. You are so holy. You are so holy, Lord. That I open up my heart. I open up my heart to the Holy One. You're the Holy One. You're the Holy One. You're the Holy One. You are the Holy One You're the Holy
it's hope just to love you is my greatest joy just to know you is my greatest hope just to love
just to dwell on, just to dwell with you. Just to dwell, just to dwell with you. Mm -hmm. Just to dwell, Lord. just to dwell with you. Just to dwell, Lord, just to dwell with you. I want to dwell with you all of my days. I want to dwell with you all of my days. I want to dwell, dwell with you. All of my days, I want to dwell with you. Thank you, God. Thirsty for peace, I'm longing for grace, just to be in your dwelling place. I'm hungry for love, oh I'm thirsty for peace, and I'm longing for grace, just to be in your dwelling place. Yes. 
opportunity for us to come together and worship you and exalt your name and glorify you Lord thank you for unifying us around the world that your love just jumps from person to person and ignites us Lord never stop singing, that you never stop rejoicing, that there's always a place for us to come to that is full of joy and light and love. I've been asked to pray for the Middle East. And of course, I have a special heart for Iran because I've been married to an Iranian for over 53 years. Both of my children were born in Iran and I lived there myself for nine years. Yes, my heart is for Iran, but God's heart is for all people, all nations, and it's for all the people of the Middle East. So let us join our hearts together in agreement that Jesus is the Holy One of all nations in the Middle East. He is the highly exalted one in heaven and on earth. Let his goodness and mercy be known. We pray Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, that God's weapons are powerful for the overturning of strongly entrenched things, overturning reasoning and every lofty thing that rises up against the knowledge of God and brings every thought and every heart captive to the obedience of Christ. Lord, send your angel armies into the nations of the Middle East, holding double-edged swords to rightly divide the things of God from the principalities and powers that have blinded and kept people from the truth, the way, and the life that is in your Son, Jesus Christ. Pour out your Spirit on the nations of the Middle East and let your anointing go forth 
in showers from heaven. Lord, we lift up the believers who are under persecution and hold fast to the promises of Psalms 91 that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose powers no foe can withstand. Lord, show your church in the West ways we can support our brothers and sisters in the Middle East who are willing to sacrifice everything, even their own lives, to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Stella. I'm going to pray for Middle East. Please join me. I'm going to start with the verse um, in Isaiah where the Lord gave me in December of 2019. This verse is uh, Isaiah 21.9. I stay at my post all night. Look, riders come, horsemen in pairs. And he answered, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All the images of her gods have been shattered on the ground. Thank you, Lord, that you love Middle East. We also want to pray for their safety, not only for their salvation, but their safety, Father. You came also for them, that they will be healed, restored, and discover your mighty works and your ways. I thank you, Father, that you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die, not only for us not only for the believers or the disciples it says in john 17 but you also pray for those who will believe in the future that will come in knowledge of understanding of you for them to become one with you in jesus name we decree this amen good morning my brothers and sisters uh my name is pastor Akhiz Noor and uh, I'm very thankful and humble to our dear Father Heaven, Father in Heaven, that He is using me and my ministry in Pakistan to saving soul and Pakistan's third biggest city. So we are uh, feeding the people with the spiritual food, and also we are helping poor and needy as God provides us. So today it's my honor and it's my pleasure to speak with you, talk with you about me and it's really honor to talk with you about uh, how to pray and what God wants from us and how we overcome in our troubles time. So nowadays worlds every person and every nation trying to beat each other and want a successful person and nation but no one thinking what God wants from us. Everyone uh, thinking about themselves, their success, but no one thinking what God wants from us. And so because of it, we are at a crucial time in our worlds and nations. And the best response we can have to all that going on around us is to seek the Lord. As a Christian, we should show responsibility. We should be light and salt as our Lord Jesus Christ, Savior, commanded us, said us, tell us that we are the light of the world. We are salt of the earth. So if we don't have taste, if we don't have light, then we are not with, the, with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we should engage the culture with the truth of word of God. We should have to engage the truth with the word of God. But our most powerful weapon against the evil, against every bad thing is prayer. And we need divine intervention without revival this world and nation will go down and path of destructions. There is a lot 
on the line light and God has promised to intervene if his people will humble themselves, pray, seek his face, turn from their wicked ways. We should have to read Second Chronicles 7.14 so we can understand better. Notice that there are four things. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, first thing God said, If my people humble themselves, pray, seek his fear, turn from their weak ways, so he will forgive them. So four things we have to discuss today. First is humbling ourselves. And second thing is, Pray and know that there is no substitute of prayers. Prayers are the keys for the success in this world and for healings, for miracles, prayers are the key. And third one is the seeking of his face. Fourth one is turn from all the wicked. So my brothers and sisters, we are going to talk about a turning point. The children of Israel found themselves a turning point. And turning point is a time at which a decisive change in a situation occurs, especially one with the beneficial results. In other words, each of us at one time or another have found ourselves at a turning point in life. Your might be one and might one be another. But regardless what yours or mine is, if you want your situation gets better, I encourage you this evening or this morning there that it happens after prayer this will happen after prayer because in life things happens and if we don't stay read up prayed and suited up our faith weakness and temptation invades our privacy and then sickness come then loneliness try to suffocate us while worry is trying to strangle us and our decision we are making are paralyzing us. In other words, the challenging of life confronts us all and none of us can cancel our appointments with troubles. Because trouble come to rich and poor, old and young, and no one of us can run out from the troubles. Because the troubles you run from there, here will follow you there. Dear brothers and sisters, I need to encourage you to stay read up prayed and suited up because another dose of trouble might be headed your way. Notice what God tells Solomon in verse 13. If we, if we are going to read, if we read in 2 Chronicles 7, 13, so we read there. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locustus to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, you can see in, in this verse that when Israel sinned against God, sometime the judgment which come upon the land was stopped the rain and devouring the cost, so it destroy crops and land and also sickness come. In other words, when adverse conditions exist, in the nature, we need to look heavenward to learn why, why this happened. 
So God tells Solomon in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. So I'm going to read it so we can understand better. That Lord said, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive, forgive their sins, and will heal their lands. Amen. So my brother, we see, and we need to understand, God said, if, it's mean that there is possibility, if mean, that there is a possibility and my people's mean dads are really really personal and this is a personal relation between God and his people that's why he says my people's and will humble themselves that's a preparations and pray and pray is a power as we are already talked about it that there is no substitute of prayer so prayer is a power and seek my face this is a pleasure and privilege that we can see the face of lord and turn from their wicked ways this is a progress we should have to make progress to see the face of lord to hear from heaven to get our blessings so we should have to progress we should have to work on our in progress to throw away our wicked ways and we should have to turn to god and then god said then i will hear from heaven this will be the procedure this is procedure that i will hear from heaven and forgive their sins this is paradon this is paradon and heal the land this is a great blessing so this is what we are talking about second chronicles that if we pray god send his blessings and heals our land god took our all kind of sickness in from our nation god took all the bad things from our families our nations our peoples but first Today, God wants to tell us, as he told to Solomon, that how to pray to God and how to seek the face of Lord, we should have to humble ourselves. This is the first thing we should have to do as a Christian. Because our Lord Jesus Christ make himself a humble person in this world. So he said, make yourself humble before the Lord. There will be no proud. There should be no proud. There will be the nothing that I'm, I'm everything. No, my brothers and sisters, only the God. So we should have to humble and say to God, that Lord, I'm your son. I'm your daughter coming to you. Please, please hear my voice, hear my cry. And second thing, seek his face in every situation, in every condition, when we see no way, when we see no door open, we should have to uh, seek the face of Lord and we will see the way. We will see door will open because we are seeking the face of Lord and he is, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way of life. And other thing we should have to do, this is really, really important and we are talking today, this is a pray. So we should have to pray also and forsake our wicked ways. The really important thing, if we say we are Christian, if we say we are the people of God, if we, if we uh, said that we are truly, truly Christian, we should have to throw away and turn away our ways and good ways. And we should have to back our wicked ways. 
we should have we should not go on the wicked ways and we cannot tell we, go, we cannot ask that we are the people of god if we are uh, uh, walking on the wicked ways so then he will hear from heaven if we do all those things god will hear from heaven and what he will do when he will hear from heaven he will bless us with the good health he will took away all kind of sickness he will not send any kind of locusts to damage our crops and he will heal our land so this is great great blessing that when he will he will bless our land so we are in the condition we need to be set free from sickness we need to be uh, we need our land be blessed and we need that we can see the face of lord so we should have to humble ourselves today i'm praying for you you should have to pray for me that god bless you there in the united states and god bless us in pakistan that we can reach to people and we can tell them that make themselves humble and seek the face of lord and turn away from their wicked ways and pray pray this is a really important thing we should have to pray the lord bless you have a blessed day a blessing from pakistan god bless you hi everyone i'm denise powell and i'm praying for ghana africa father lord i just thank you for the nation of ghana and i thank you that they are your people they are a Christian nation and I pray that wholeness and restoration comes to the land and I ask that you just come against poverty, I ask that you come against corruption um, and I ask that you raise up a president who, who knows you and can do your work. So Father I just thank you for the nation again and thank you that they are your people in Jesus name, Amen. Hello, I am Jean Wenzel and I'm going to be praying for South Africa. Woohoo, the good place. Father, we lift South Africa up to you. We glorify you and acknowledge that you are God over the country. Power and might are in your hand so that none are able to withstand you. You set up rulers and oppose them. So we thank you for deposing the ungodly rulers on national, provincial and local government level and for appointing the righteous to positions of authority. We also pray for a restoration of the relationship between South Africa and Israel. We ask you to build a bridge between South Africa and Jerusalem in Jesus' name, Amen. Hi everyone, we'll now pray for Sierra Leone and the nations of Africa. Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for what you have done and what you have created Lord in Africa and Sierra Leone Lord. We thank you Lord that your spirit moving all over the earth Lord has not forgotten Africa or Sierra Leone. I thank you, Lord, that you love these people so much, Lord, that it's your desire for them to come to the saving knowledge of Yeshua. I thank you, Lord, for your word that has gone forth to the nation. And we pray today, O oh Lord, that the nation, that the people of Africa, the people in Sierra Leone would rise up and turn their hearts to you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the believers in Sierra Leone, O oh Lord, will grow full of courage and boldness to Cast away every idol, O Lord, and call upon your spirit, O Lord, and flow and walk in your love and declare Yeshua in such love so that the revival in Sierra Leone and in the rest of Africa would explode even further in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Deji Jegadi, and I'm going to pray for the nation of Africa, and in particular, West Africa and Nigeria. Father God, I thank you for Africa, West Africa and Nigeria. I thank you that the gospel has indeed been spread in Nigeria, and the people of Nigeria love Jesus. 
But Lord, I'm praying today for the eradication of poverty and corruption. Father, you said in your word that no one can serve two masters in Matthew 6, 24. Lord, I come against traditional practices and the seeking of other gods. Lord, I ask you, Lord, for your mercy over Nigeria, particularly concerning traditional practices. Lord, you said in your word in Second Chronicles 7, 14, and if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Father, the land of Nigeria needs your healing. The people of Nigeria need to be set free from poverty and corruption. I ask that you will intervene this day because of this prayer and break the heavy yoke that is over this people. Set them free so that the potential in you can be fully realised across Nigeria and West Africa and that Africa can prosper and be totally set free from poverty and corruption. I thank you that that nation is blessed. I thank you, Lord, that you look down and you smile upon Africa and the African people. I ask you, Lord, that in the mighty name of Jesus, you would hear this prayer and have mercy over the nation of Nigeria and set them completely free. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I'm in agreement, aren't we? All of us, prayer, worship, we're that God will just unveil himself and all the veils that are over nations, over iron domes that seek to block the glory and the knowledge of the glory of God are coming down and the light of his gospel is being seen. That, that humility and, and desperation, intentionality and devotion is just being given and revelation of Jesus Christ throughout all of the continent of Africa and up into the Middle East in Jesus name well we are going to take a moment to give in the feast it was a time of gathering what we had been blessed with to bring them to the Lord to worship him with and to receive just as prayer is a way of returning humility is a way of being received so is giving and giving and forgiving we spoke of that last night that during the feast of tabernacles is when they executed the seven year debt cycle or a re removal of debt and the 15th, 50th year of jubilee was during the yom kippur right before the feast so this is the time we release others it's the time we give we bring our heart to God, we give, and we have this night and tomorrow night, and then we're the feast closes. You can give online by going to our website. It's simple. Uh, you'll find a donate button. It'll take you to a uh, real quick fill out the blanks for Tidely app, which is a very secure app that you can also download on your phone and look up our church, Jubilee Church Camarillo, and find it that way. You can choose a method of payment, and then you can also... Uh, distribute it at your choice and your will and you can even use a texting uh, app that goes with that tightly which I, I've been enjoying of course you can give by writing a check you can send it in the mail you can drop it off if you're local here in our church the key is that God wants us to, de to give of ourselves. this week for me has called me out further into him He's asked, he's not even asked more. I want to give him more. Uh, he's captured more of my heart. And this three times a day, being in the presence for seven days a week, intentionally with brothers and sisters all over the world, is igniting faith and is and illuminating my vision of, of the face of God, the seeking his face, and turning from useless things, wicked things, spoiled items, things that are no longer necessary, and rededicating to the one thing, the one God, the true God, and to give all, myself, my time, my tithe, my talents, my treasures. And I bless you for doing the same thing. It's my belief we are coming out into a place of forgiveness and healing uh, into this new year with an opportunity that we're going to see uh, 
we're going to see an outpouring. We're going to see breakthrough. We're going to see hearts that are being ignited. I've got a message tomorrow that I really feel has built through this entire week of journeying together. So grace to your giving, faithfulness, and God, I pray right now, Lord, take our offering, which is to bring our heart to you through our giving, and receive it in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we declare that every person, as they bring their offering, you look upon that, just as we've looked upon this whole week as an offering to you, that you would receive the offering, you would command a blessing, and you would set the course for the new year. You told us that we would come out of the crises, a world pandemic, in health and in wealth. And I bless everyone around the world with that declaration that COVID-19 goes under the feet of the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. And that uh, the body enters into the new place that was prepared for us for this next season. I declare that there be open doors of opportunity, there will be restoration of things that have been lost, and there will be acceleration into the things God's done. But again, before we launch, we want to return. We bring ourselves to you. You're so good. You've been faithful. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your kindness. Thank you for what you're doing to touch Africa and all of the nations from the south to the north and up into the Middle East, up through Sudan and into Saudi Arabia, all the way up into Pakistan, as we've heard from our pastor friend in Pakistan already. Grace, grace, grace grace to what you are accomplishing in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, my name is Deanie Rollins, and today I would like to pray for the country of South Africa. Well, our Father and our God, we thank you for that beautiful nation of South Africa that was founded on your principles, that was founded on your word that those original farmers that are being slaughtered by the hundreds every day, are, their voices are trying to be silenced. But Lord, these are God-fearing, Jesus-loving men and women who are the farmers, the boors of the country. So God, we ask right now in Jesus' name as we humble ourselves before you, God, that you will bring healing to the land. God, we thank you that the farmers are gathering together, the South African um, men and women and children are gathering together to pray, to seek your face, and to humble themselves and ask for your forgiveness. So we say that and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the amazing and incredible things that you've done in my nation of Rwanda and I pray Father God that Rwanda continues to look to you, continues to walk on the path of forgiveness and allowing you in the decision making process Lord of, um, of everything they're doing in the government Lord um, I pray, Father, that your, your son's name would be magnified in the nation. And we, Father, we never get to a place where we forget that you are the one that um, has brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Um, Lord, I just pray that yeah, the people of Rwanda continue to grow, uh, continue to grow in relationship with you, Father God. Um, I pray that as we um, prosper, that we not only prosper prosper um, economically, um, but we prosper spiritually as well in the name of Jesus. I just pray for joy and your covering of the Rwanda, Father God, that, um, that you will guide us, Lord, and that you will make us yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Um. This is George uh, Lokwawi uh, from Turkana, Kenya. And uh, we had um, information that we have to offer the prayer uh, to these two countries. 
and that is, is um, Kenya and the uh, United States. Uh, and I want to read a scripture that goes with the, with the, with the prayer that I'm going to offer. Uh, from the second chronicle uh, chapter 7 verses 14 uh, as it says if my people which are called by my name uh, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and uh, turn uh, from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear will heal their land uh, I want to make a prayer just right now uh, for these two countries uh, let us pray father in the name of Jesus we uh, just want to thank you for uh, what you have done for us uh, I want to pray for the continent of uh, United States of America and uh, we as you have said in the Bible uh, that if my people uh, can uh, hear uh, your voice and repent themselves uh, turn away from uh, their ways wicked ways uh, you can hear and you can turn your 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 face and you can heal their uh, sicknesses and weaknesses and you can heal their land. I ask you to heal the land of America. I ask you to lean to heal the continent of United States. I am praying also for the leadership of United States, the political leadership, and, are, and that is the pres president of America, uh, Trump, and uh, his uh, whole leadership. And uh, also I want to remember the body of Christ in the United States. Uh, missionaries and churches that are really uh, pen uh, preaching the gospel and making the gospel to penetrate the whole continent and beyond. We want to thank you. Thank you for the country of Kenya. We are praying also for our country that God, you may heal the leadership of this country. You may uh, protect this country. You may uh, make them to repent and you can turn your face to bless the people of this country. We are praying also for the president of this country, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, and his leadership as a whole. We want to thank you. Thank you for the body of Christ in this country. Bless it as, as, as we continue to, uh, to reach your people, to reach the unreached, because we have many places that the gospel has not been mentioned even one time. I'm praying that you may uh, make a way uh, so that you ease in the hearts of the people so that they can turn their way, they can, they can, they can turn from their wicked, wicked ways.
I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. My name is Bonfes Lokuruka. I'm a pastor with Free Pentecostal Fellowship in Kenya. Uh, the church is uh, in, uh, in one of the counties in Kenya called Trukana County, far north, uh, almost close to the border of Southern Sudan. I want to pray, and I pray with regards to uh, the book of Genesis and in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter seven, chapter seven, verse fourteen. The Bible says that if my people, who are called by my name, shall humble, pray, seek His face, turn away from their wickedness, and then when that is done, two things God is going to do: one, He's going to forgive us; two, He's going to heal our land. To me, the two things that God is going to do depends on the four things that I'm going to do as a person. For me, to humble is an issue. To, to pray is an issue. To seek the face of God is an issue. To turn away from wickedness is an issue. And when I do that as a human being, then the rest of the things that will follow, God is going to do it. And it is my prayer and my plea that Americans shall humble themselves. That America should seek the face of God. That America should pray. That America should turn away from all the wickedness, gazing, abortions, and whatever is happening right now in America. If they can humble themselves, God is going to hear us. Let's believe God, our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. We humble before you this moment. We seek your face this moment. We cry to you. There has never been a time that you have left people who are going to humble before you, who have seeked your face and those who have prayed and those who are going to turn away from their wickedness. It is my prayer right now, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that my brothers in this country of America should be able to turn away from all this wickedness that we hear, from all this wickedness that we see, them engaging themselves in gazing, them engaging themselves God of glory, ensuring killing the small babies, the unborn babies. This is the wickedness that has come to you. That is why God, you are asking us right now that God, we should humble, we should seek your face, we should pray and turn away from our wickedness. Lord, I pray that America should turn away from their wickedness. I know you are a God who is faithful enough to be able to bring healing into their land. That is why you have laid a condition, God, upon us to seek your faith, to pray, to repent quest forgiveness from you and father in jesus name you are going to forgive us tonight king of glory i pray for america i pray for the citizens of america i pray for the leaders of america even this moment when they are planning to be able to elect their leaders lord give them the wisdom and understanding fire that is there right now burning some of the uh, uh, regions dear lord you are bringing the fire to a stop still of king of glory the issue of gazing those who pass the laws things things are going to be reversed in the name of Jesus. The issue of killing uh, unborn babies, Lord, this is contrary to your will. And that is why, dear Lord, tonight I want to pray that God, you are going to remember America and you are bringing America back to you in the name of Jesus. The leadership of America are turning to you. The people of America are turning to you for the glory and honor of your name. Lord, I thank you because you are a faithful God. Yes, I know you are healing them right now. You are humbling them right now. They are seeking your face right now. God, you are going to forgive them, dear God. And you are going to bring healing in America. The healing of America is a healing to Kenya. Healing from America, healing that is going to take place in America is a healing that you are also bestowing upon Kenya. Kenya and America, Father, we are together in so many things. And when our brother from America, when the nation of America is crying, dear Lord, we are crying together with them. I also pray for Kenya as I pray for America. I want to thank you because you are going to bring a solution. In Jesus' mighty name I pray.
Well, good evening, brothers and sisters. What a joy to be a part of Heal Our Land. I just cannot say enough about the importance right now to be focused on Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and what a wonderful uh, time to be together with our brothers and sisters from around the world, and especially in Africa. What a joy to be able to pray together, worship together. It's, a, it's an amazing thing that God is doing, and it's so, so um, uh, timely, such a timely uh, to put together a, a conference online like this. But I want to share with you uh, just some testimonies tonight. I want to encourage you and uh, so that you can, can continue to grow in, in this time together in really coming before the Lord and why, why we are in Second Chronicles right now and the importance of it. My wife and I served in Africa for uh, 14 years, from 1979 to uh, 1993. And uh, over those years, we saw some uh, seven churches planted. These were first ever churches out in a very far away place, and uh, that's a, a desert land, uh, not much rain. Uh, when, you, when you read in Second Chronicles that if the Lord should shut the heavens and there's no rain, uh, this is the place. Uh, it, it, it is a difficult place, but the people thrive there, and they live there. And there are wonderful people in the Lord. You just heard from two of the pastors tonight, and hopefully they'll be with us tomorrow if you're going to join in. I want to share with you specifically what I read in Second Chronicles. And I know I've read this scripture over and you've heard it a million times, but I want to begin just with the first few words of Second Chronicles 7.14. Because it's, uh, it's the part about, If my people called by my name, if my people, I hear in there, I hear in there the very heart of the Lord calling to his people. Call, and, and I hear many different things in these few words right here, just the very few words, things that I've never even thought about. Because for me, I go right to the end. I go right to all the conditions that must take place so that the benefit can be that my land will be healed, my people will be taken care of. And those things are so important. But in the very beginning of these scriptures, I hear the heart of the Lord, who is so much wanting this relationship, that separation was never his plan, and, and, and never his idea that we should be apart. And when he says, if my people called by my name, this is ownership, it's the greatest thing in the whole world. To be a, have a God who loves us so much that even lets us use his name. His name is upon us. And that's so wonderful. Why do I say this? I am looking at testimonies now from 25, 30 years ago and how God has so demonstrated this. Yet in this day where it seems like the world has been turned upside down ever so much more. These, these uh, testimonies will come true and, and open up things that we've never seen. I thank so much the Lord for my brothers and sisters in Africa, in Kenya, and specifically way up in the northwest corner of Kenya in a place called Turkana. And this place is a very, very special place. I feel the Lord's eyes and favor is upon this land. I have to say that the... the the, the scriptures here really remind me of the, the position and place that the Lord has put us in. It's a, such, an, it's such an honor and such a calling, even in these days where Israel was so separated from God, so much going off in the wrong direction, yet he come back again hearing Solomon's prayer and say, if my, my people, my people, call by my name, and I feel, I sense right there that this has is, this is so been so demonstrated out in this land in, in years past. You know, we, we left there in 1993, but we came back to see how the churches had grown throughout the district. Uh, 
how God had continued to spread the word of his, uh, the, the knowledge of the gospel throughout the land, north, south, east, and west. And many denominations had come there and come in. But yet, when they did, uh, there, there came a time around 2002 where the Lord directed it was time for everyone to come together. All the different churches, all the different denominations, all the pastors and leaders together. Let's come together and get acquainted with each other and get to know one another. And so a meeting was called. And it was wonderful, just as you would expect. And during that time, pastors who had never even uh, known of each other's church or never even had met before had a wonderful time. But at the end of the meeting, they joined hands together and they made a declaration. They said this. They said, this land is far away. We are distant from one another. But well, it's today. Let's declare one church in this land. Let's say that we are the church of Turkana, not divided by denominations, Yes, we have them, but let's declare one church. And they did so. And then what I feel, the most important word that came forth at that time came from one of the pastors. And to me, this is the most powerful word. He said, you know, it's so wonderful that we can gather here together. It's so wonderful that we can love one another and share with one another and discuss our differences with one another. But he said, that's that's wonderful, but what about our enemies? And suddenly, something struck us all in that meeting. Like, you're right. Like, we have something that's so special. But yet, we are distant from our enemies. You know, this land is bordered by five other tribes. And there, in those days, there was a lot of what we called border raiding. In other words, because of the, the, the land, uh, how it was positioned, uh, and, and placed that they would be, at that time they were actually taking each other's animals. Because of the lack of food, uh, they would steal each other's animal. This has been going on for a long time between each other, and people would be killed. And this is a terrible thing. And at that time, 2002, was probably at the height of it, it seemed that no one knew had the answer on the ground of what to do. Yes, churches were praying. But given government got involved and NGOs and, and organizations uh, from around the world actually came and, and held meetings and, and sought out reconciliation and even uh, restored uh, animals back that had been stolen and so forth. But to no avail. And it was a real issue at that time. But when he said, what about our enemies? Then suddenly there was an activation occurred throughout in the spirit among everyone. And they said, yes, together. Yes, let's go to our enemies. And let's seek out a peace that no one else can, can, can ever see. You see, at that time, this would not heard of. No one would ever think of doing such a thing. And even at that meeting, no one had any specific plan. Yet in six months later, a meeting was called. And all the different groups represented were represented in that meeting. And that was a wonderful time. Because what happened there was the most powerful thing to really hit the region. Because one by one, pastors came forward representing their people in their, and doing what they know to do is to stare each other, at, look at one another and share with one another uh, how terrible it is, this fighting that kills one another and steals each other's animals, how a disgrace this is and how awful this is, and it must come to an end. But let's do this. Let's, let's confess our sins to one another and let's forgive one another. And so they did just that. And nobody would ever have thought what would have happened? No one was seeking at that time to have their land healed, to have restitution themselves, to gain some prize unto themselves. Their, their heart was like this. It was said, this is what the Lord put on our hearts. This is what we must do. And it took on a whole life of its own and went on for several years. I, I was able to, to be a part of several meetings. I, I have to tell you, um, my... My African brothers and sisters are so powerful when they, they pray together. And, and it seems as if the Lord was leading them so powerfully that it didn't matter 
uh, where they gathered, it seems like at every meeting, new ground was taken, new pieces were established, and new testimonies of how fighting had come down and how in one region completely there would have been no border raiding as it had come to a complete stop. And some people, well, well, how did that happen? Because the real guys that are real out there fighting, they're, they're not in your meeting. Do you mean the pastors were able to do something? Yes, that's exactly what they did because they, they, they followed what the Lord showed them to do. And the Lord took care of every detail after that. Brothers and sisters, when we put on this position, it's a position with our Heavenly Father, a place that we can only stand. And it's a place of being peacemakers and reconciles. He will come and take care of everything else. It's that going back to that, if my people, my people. You can repeat that a dozen times because it is in the heart of God that he is so desiring that's why all of this, that's why all of this about, about uh, humbling ourselves and everything, those are the things that have separated us from him, and he so much wants relationship. So that things like this can continue to happen, and they do continue to happen. So throughout that 10 years, roughly eight years, we saw amazing things there. But in the year 2010, a famine came on. And it was terrible. I was, unable, I was able to be there at that time and join in with the prayers with my brothers there. And uh, we prayed. At that time, because of what had taken place, there was such a favor that everyone felt. They said, look, we had such a wonderful thing that happened in these last years. We have seen our people stop fighting. We have seen even government has come to recognize us as a people that are so uh, and have such favor with God that they invite us to their meetings. They want us to sit on the platform with them. They want us to pray before government meetings are opened up because they know that we carry the, the power of the Lord in our hearts. And when we pray, things happen, and they did the way they should happen. But now, hunger, famine in the land. No one was disappointed, but everyone was full of faith and prayed, uh, prayed 14 prayers, wrote out just 14 prayers that would, you would regard as healing for the land. And one of them was specifically about uh, prosperity in the land. And that the Lord, they're saying to one another in those days, Lord, we would have never, you would have never brought us to this land to starve. You did not give us this land to not have food aplenty. You did not give us this place that we should have, have lack and have nothing. Surely well, there must be uh, a time, Lord, where you're going to bless our land. One year later, one year later, oil was discovered in this land. Not any place in this land, but in the land of the Turkana. And it wasn't just that it was just discovered. In fact, it had been sought after for more than 30 years by the biggest oil companies in the world, and they could find zero oil. But after the prayer, the prayer of faith, one year later, a small company came and discovered so much oil that it was the record find in a decade in the earth. And you can read about this if you can. It was published in BBC articles and newspapers. Not only that, later it was discovered that this oil is the best oil that we've ever seen. It's, they said, if you know oil, this was the, the, the grade, the quality of it was like unheard of. And there's like so many, bill, like a billion barrels of oil in five or six different locations. Now some people, yes, immediately, oh, that's just going to bring problems to them. Well, uh, that remains to be seen. But, in it does, but, but what happened was, is that, is that more importantly, is that, is that the Father uh, brought to them what no one else could ever find in the whole of Kenya. And the whole rest of Kenya was looking now at the Turkana and saying, the people that we thought had the least and were, and were the people that were downcast have now risen to a place of prominence, and their land has supplied all of our land with wealth. The amazing but that wasn't, that wasn't enough for God because of the favor, the favor that had been garnered in those 10 years, the favor that had been given to those pastors. 
It's like, it's like that favor that you hear about, that you read about in Job 22, 28, that, it, that Job was given such favor that whatever he called out, whatever he decreed, the Lord would do it. And it was just like that. A year later, after the, the, the discovery of the oil, um, uh, there was another prayer meeting called together. The pastors joined together once again, this time full of faith more than ever. They had seen the powerful work of the Lord in their land, and they just went loose. I mean, I don't know how to tell you. They just started writing things out about a transformed land like no one else could have ever done. Forty different prairie prayers and declarations of how this land was going to be transformed. They knew it was God. They knew that he would do it. They wrote about universities being started there. They wrote about new roads, even an international airport, a soccer stadium out in the middle of the desert. Believe that. And all kinds of things, and especially of water. Water, and then and another one said that, that this place will be a place of abundant water and there will be farming produce enough to feed all of Kenya and beyond. Well, you look out the window, <laughs> you would see uh, the building that those prayers are being written in and you go, this can never happen in this place. One year later, BBC article comes out, water discovered in the land of Turkana, an amazing find, none which we've ever seen before in three different locations. Enough water for all of Kenya for 70 years. That was the, what was written, 70 years. Do you know that God was in the middle of the miracle? God was, was, was already working out the plan. That amount of water brought such grace and such breakthrough in the land that they began to see many people move up there, they saw land being developed. They saw water being brought out of the ground to plenty and the promise of a future like they've never seen before. Brothers and sisters, this is a position that God wants us to learn from our brothers and sisters in Africa, to learn how they came before the Lord to do something without thinking of what they would get from it. They, they really, truly just did what they knew they needed for them, on behalf of the people. And that's, that, is, that is our prayer for us, too. That is their prayer for us as well. When the man said, when the pastor said, but what about our enemies? Something happened. Something happened. And went amazingly out of, the, out of this world. So I want to encourage you with those testimonies. The Lord has done great things even beyond there. We're going to hear maybe some more testimonies in the morning. But I want to encourage you to remember to this tonight, to know how the Lord's heart is so turned to the turn to, to you, how he loves you so much, how he is expectant of us and what we will do at this time. How, how he is looking at us and saying, my people, these are my people. He's, he's not shamed. He is so proud of us, so proud of his people. But there, he's, it's the call to do what is right, to do the thing that is needed to do, that is, brings the relationship to him. That's the most important thing. Healing the land, he will do. And he will do it well. And he'll do it abundantly far more than we can ever expect. So I want to thank you, Lord, for Jubilee. I want to thank you, Father, for the focus that they have on Heal the Land right now. Once again, I feel like you have broken new ground. I feel like, once again, you are at the tip of the spear. <laughs> You've just done something so amazing by hearing the Lord. So I love Jubilee Church. They pray. They listen, they pray more, and they continue to listen. But when they've heard the Lord, watch out. They're going to go for it. And I'm telling you, they are a church that continues to move forward and go for the things that God wants on this earth. This meeting is only the beginning. There is much more to come. And there are many more things. When we draw together with our brothers and sisters from around the world, it is, it is truly a God-arranged God sent meeting 
that brings about the blessing from the Lord, not to our hearts, but gives us strength for the days ahead and gives our brothers and sisters strength for the days ahead. So, Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Father, for these wonderful testimonies that only you can do, and all the glory goes to you, Lord. You did it, Lord. You performed what you said you would do. And we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Randy. That is so encouraging. So encouraging. I want you to stay up here and just going to help me with a prayer before we go. Uh, here's, here's an opportunity for us to just step into this very uh, phenomenon of how God can step in to the circumstances of life and receive a humble heart prayer seeking the face and repentance turning from the wicked ways and then forgiveness and healing those of you that are part of our body you under you'll know that you know brian rogers our executive pastor son and family they live in lake charles louisiana part of a uh, mercy ministry ships that travel around the world to go into areas where uh, they've been ravaged whether by famine or storms well Earlier this summer, they were hit with a hurricane. Many of you will remember called it Hurricane Laura. The force tore, uh, destroyed their own uh, ships, their warehouses. Uh, Shane and Hannah's house was taken off its foundation and the roof torn off. And it's just been a devastation. So they didn't go anywhere this year, this whole ministry friendship. They've just been working, working, working leaving their house just per, you know covered with a tarp while they keep reaching out to recover the land to help the city and to restore electricity it's just starting to get up close to normal well right now there's another hurricane sixth of this year coming called hurricane delta barreling in to lake charles it's right at the path to lake charles about to land there sometime tomorrow afternoon and we want to just humble ourselves. And we, of course, we've been praying, but it's like what you said. We, we pray, but then there's moments we can just say, God, we would like for all the reasons these things keep happening or for all the reasons we need you to step in to, to be in a moment. So if you will join us all over the world, let us, let's just pray right now. And I'm going to ask you, Randy, to lead that prayer. Just that 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 hurricane will change course, it will dissipate, it will not create the de destruction that is there. Uh, Hannah and their two daughters, that's Shane's uh, wife, they thought, well, we don't want our little girls. They, they were on a boat, so the boats, they go through the whole storm. They said, we're going to get out of here because it's just we'll go over to Texas. So they got in a car and they drove well, they didn't drive. They got stuck in the exodus, the, the people trying to go. So for five hours, they barely inched along until finally Hannah said, this is not going to work. So she turns around, gets back on the road, and in 30 minutes is home. So you can understand the devastation, the panic, the, the stress that this is producing. And I believe God would have us just to intercede and step into this this. Step in, the, step in front of the storm and use the name of Jesus and ask God to divert it and make it go to landfall if, without its power and without its destructive force. So, Randy, if you wouldn't mind, I would. Let's join together in prayer, brothers and sisters. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus, Father. We ask, Father, for your hand to stay the hurricane off, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, you divert the hurricane away to, that it will not harm anyone, Father. Father, we pray for a dissipation, Father, for there to be a weather event, Father, that is unparalleled, Father, that brings that hurricane down in Jesus' name. Father, you are mighty. You are powerful. You calm the wind and the waves, Lord. And we say now, Father, calm the wind. Calm the wind, Lord. Let it come down, Father. Father, we pray for angels to stand guard over people. Father, may they be covered and protected this night in Jesus' name. And we pray, Father, that you surround your people for Brian's kids, Father. Bless them, Father. Surround them, Father, with your protection in Jesus' name. Father, we just uh, agree with that we can step into the place of others as you did for all of humanity. And we just come in this spirit of humility and prayer to seek the face of the Lord Jesus 
We thank you that there are mercy ministry. There is love. There is Christ-likeness being shown in that land. But we join our faith and ask that you would just forgive, dissipate the the, the bursting forth of creation trying to find its way. Bring forth redemption. Bring forth healing. And as we agreed with Randy's prayer, this diverts, dissipates, and causes none of the destruction that is now being uh, forecasted. And we speak joy, an expressive joy in the hearts of uh, Shane and Hannah's girls. Even uh, like an adventure that they, not the, the dread and anticipation. We, dis- we take off the trauma. We take off the trauma, the, the, the spirits of heaviness and fear, and, and we speak a, a praise upon the land, a joy. A, we just join with this miracle we were taught and told the story of Turkana, and we now step into the miracle that we just ask you to step in, into the middle and the beautiful Gulf Coast, coast and into Louisiana and Florida, and we just say, come now, Lord Jesus, and just stay in there and say, hush, peace, be still, no further, dissipate, no harm, relax, rest. All the word that Jesus said when he stood up on the boat, you do care for us, and you said, hush. So we say, hush, Delta, hush, stop, stop. Don't keep moving. Don't gain strength. Don't gain force. Hush. Stop. Dissipate. Do not bring harm and destruction. Bring hope. Lord Jesus, we glorify your name because this, this you, the Lord, are the healer of our land. You are the forgive our sin. You are the one that steps into humanity and we put our faith now in Jesus Christ. We say you're more than enough. Your blood is more than enough. Your your victory is still triumphant and we put our faith in there and believe Lord even now for an intervention that heaven is so strong doing in Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Yes. Let's stay in agreement with this. Let's just keep declaring that Delta dissipates. Delta goes back to sea. Delta becomes harmless. Delta becomes a blessing, not a curse. Delta is, is no longer the, the threat that it was. And it, it submits to the word of the Lord. Jesus says, hush. And everything goes, shoo, in Jesus' name. That's, we're, we're doing it. We're practicing. We're growing our sound. Tomorrow morning, this was this has been so good, and it's so encouraging when we get to have the testimony. But can you imagine, out of all the prayer, not just our heal our land eight days, but the, all the multitudes of places and countries and gatherings that have just been focusing on, Lord, we are in a place we cannot solve our problem. We de- we cannot resolve our conflicts. We are humbling ourselves. For the lack of our own humility, we're going as low as we can, bow the knee to the sovereign king. We're praying and we're, we're seeking the face of God for your presence is our power and we're turning from our wicked ways. Heal, forgive, deliver us. I believe it's gonna, we're going to start seeing that. And tomorrow night we'll, we'll, we'll put this crowning because it's the great day of the feast, the last day, the day Jesus promised the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. on YouTube, we have a roundtable. Some of the, Randy will be there, Edie will be there, plus a couple of the pastors you heard from on, in this class, in this service, and others. We're just, oh yeah, and the pastor from uh, uh, Pakistan. So it's going to be a lively, uh, informative, but empowering conversation. Then intercession at 1 p.m., and then we will come back for the final service of Heal Our Land tomorrow night at 6 p.m. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for walking together. We are together watching, praying, agreeing, standing together. Thank you. We bless you. We love you. We will see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. California time. All right. Bye. Thanks for shall renew the ruined cities and heal the devastations of many generations.